Father Barnabas Powell is pastor of Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene, Greek Orthodox Church of Cumming, Georgia, USA. Here's Father Barnabas with Sunday's homily. The power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is embedded in the central reality of what it means to be Christian. The fact of the matter is, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the physical bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, the conquering of mortality is the central reason to be a Christian. It isn't enough simply to have a religious philosophy. Christianity is not just one of many religious philosophies. There certainly are a lot of religious philosophies out there. We have a, we have a very prominent secular religious the, philosophy that is prominent in our day today. We've seen all kinds of stuff talked about in religious terms in our society today. But Christianity is not one of many religious philosophies. Christianity is the declaration that physical death is no longer the master of human existence. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. There is no other reason to be Christian than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you want to just simply be a good person, I have several philosophies I can recommend to you that will be behavior modification and will help you get over your bad habits and help you make your bed every morning and be a good person. Tons of stuff. I got great stuff. Ro join the Rotary. Great club. Join the Rotary Club. Have you ever read yeah, the Rotary Club have these wonderful three tests of things that are true? It's absolutely fantastic. I recommend them highly to you. If you just want to be a better human being, tons of stuff will help you. But if you want to live in a way that actually presses out the implication that death is no longer a problem for humans, there is only one pathway for you. Only one. Oh, but Father, what about Hinduism with their reincarnation? No, I'm not having, I'm not going through puberty again. It's not happening. No. I'm not doing it again. No. If you want to press out the implications of the fact that the Christian faith declares. Now, I'm not talking about the liberal fluffy nose uh, folks that nowadays that say, oh, Jesus rose from the dead in the hearts of his disciples, or Jesus, I never will forget, there's this great argument that was going on in Germany with these uh, German Protestant theologians who were trying to explain away the physical resurrection of Jesus. And there were some Jewish people there, and a Jewish rabbi was there, and he looked at these German Protestants and said, I don't get why you guys are sawing off the log you're sitting on. You're, sitting, you're sawing off the limb that you're sitting on in the tree. If it's not for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, folks, be a Buddhist. It's easier. You can do it by yourself. I'm just trying to be honest with you because the whole point of this 40 days of celebration, every Sunday of this 40 days of celebration, is trying to talk to you about the implications of the physical bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Christ has destroyed death, brothers and sisters, what in heaven's name can harm you? If you don't have to be afraid of dying anymore, what does the devil have to hold over you? If this is true, folks, you can actually be free. The first Sunday after the resurrection, we talked about freedom from doubt. What do you do when you doubt? Last Sunday, we talked about the freedom from timidity, where you don't have to be timid anymore. You don't have to be reserved anymore. You can actually declare with boldness. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He's the Lord. Oh, but, but Father, if we say that nowadays, we may offend someone. Man, I really hate that. That whole fellow one time told me, he said, you unhappy? Yeah, well, scratch right here. There's a glad place right here. You can scratch it and you'll feel better. This isn't about, folks, being happy or sad. And you've heard me a thousand times say over and over again, if the point of your life is to be happy, then you are of all men most miserable. Because if happiness is your goal, then everything external to you has power over you. 
If somebody cuts you off in traffic, you're not happy anymore. If you don't get along with somebody, you're not happy anymore. I don't want to be married to this person anymore. They don't make me happy. Well, tough, guys. Suck it up, buttercup. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Oh, but I don't want to be miserable. Well, you're not going to be miserable forever. The very joy of the Christian faith is that embedded in every misery is its own destruction. Embedded in every sadness, embedded in every tear, and embedded in every problem, in every difficulty, in every struggle, is the, is, the, is the DNA of its demise. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. What can happen to you now? Folks, if this is true, all bets are off. It's Christianity or ignorance. That's it. That's it. It's Christianity or death. And this Sunday, we're confronted with a paralytic. I entitled the sermon that I was going to preach today. I've already preached one already. I can stop now. Well, that wasn't bad. No. But I actually had a point to all of that. What are you waiting for? We heard about overcoming doubt. Last week, we heard about overcoming timidity. And today, we're hearing about overcoming procrastination. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What is it in your life that's paralyzing you and leaving you stuck where you are? What's paralyzing you? What's got a grip on you where you continue revisiting the same spot in your life over and over again? Let me make this a little less personal, okay? Or maybe make it a little bit more personal. You know what's really gripping me and making me paralyzed? There are several things in my life that's gripping me and making me paralyzed. And I keep revisiting the same spot over and over again in my life. I want to be free from that. The resurrection of Jesus Christ offers you the path out of being enslaved to the procrastination of what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for in actually doing what you know you should be doing? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for when you know what would make you better? What would make you happier? Did you know, I never will forget the first time when I was in uh, seminary the first time around, I, I did my minor in pastoral counseling. And one of our therapists that were coming in doing our teaching was, te was teaching us how to do therapy. And she was talking to us and she said, you know what we therapists do? And I, I said, well, you tell people what to do. He said, oh, and she said, she said, oh, no. They already, they come to us knowing what they ought to do. We help them articulate it and make a path to get there. You see, the truth is, dear ones, most of us know what we ought to do. Most of us know what choices we ought to make. Most of us know what path we ought to take. Most of us know the right way to do something. It's really not that complicated. That's what's so frustrating about it. If it were, uh, it, it's, not, it's not complicated. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. And so the purpose of the therapist is to help you articulate and build a plan for doing what you already know you ought to. So what's stopping you? What's paralyzing you today? If you knew you couldn't be killed, what kind of life would you live? If you knew you could dare to reach the potential that you were created for, who would you be? If you had a vision who you were made to be in the first place, do you have the courage to reach for it? The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the bodily destruction of mortality in the person of Jesus Christ offers you and me this morning, today, the path out of paralysis and towards the freedom you were created for in the first place. So the question becomes, what are you waiting for? What excuse are you using? Oh, I don't have a man to put me in the, in the pool when it's, when it's troubled. 
And then when I do start moving into the water, wait a second, I thought you said hey, you didn't have anybody to put you in the pool, and now you're talking about moving toward the pool? Come on, boy. Something stinks here. Jesus finally gets to the point, and when he asks him, he says, do you want to be healed? Do you? Do you want to be free? Do you actually want to be the man or the woman that God has created you to be? Do you want to, have, do you want to reach that potential? Then, folks, lay aside the excuses. And believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And you will be empowered to become that person. That's the promise of the resurrection. That's the reason to be Christian. That's why I'm orthodox. It's why. This is the medicine that makes a man or a woman an eternal person. And this faith sets us free from the power of procrastination to keep us enslaved to the rhythm of death. On this Sunday of the paralytic, it's time to get moving. Now let me warn you ahead of time. When you start down this path, when you pick up your pallet and walk, when you actually dare to believe you can be freed from your paralysis, you're going to have tons of people around you saying, who told you you could do that? Who said, what, do, what, what are you doing here? Don't you know it's the Sabbath? You ain't supposed to be carrying your mat on the Sabbath. You're breaking the rules. Brothers and sisters, don't let the naysayers in your life keep you convinced you have to stick and, be, and, and, be, and stay paralyzed. They don't. they don't. They don't get to tell you that. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. You're free. Act like it. Amen. You can follow Father Barnabas on YouTube or on our church website at stsrni.org. Thank you for watching.